cops actually, or the cop runs away from a violent man and lets him flee. Here it is. Put up the picture full mass. You mean to tell me, sir, Mr. Officer, you were not in fear of your life? Because see, typically when something like this happens, the person is shot if they happen to be black, for sure, okay? And all the officer has to say, I was in fear of my life, justified. I'm not advocating that this man should be dead. I am actually glad that preservation of life was honored here. My request is that we work to preserve the life of all. 47 year old William Williams. A Chula Vista man who allegedly threatened a person with a screwdriver on Thursday near Saratoga Park in Ocean Beach. This is in San Diego, all right? Led police on a brief road chase. It ended in his arrest following multiple traffic crashes, including one involving a police cruiser. San Diego PD were responding to multiple 911 callers reporting the threatening behavior shortly before 2.30 p.m. SDPD spokesman Darius Jam Set G told ABC7 San Diego that minutes later, Williams allegedly aggressively confronted the first officer to arrive. He continued, additional officers were urgently requested. The officer initially attempted to subdue the subject using a stun gun, which proved ineffective. Sounds like superhuman strength to me. After maintaining a safe distance, the officer also employed an expendable baton. Once again, no effect. Superhuman abilities here, right? There's more uh, in the shocking video um, uploaded on Instagram by Connect San Diego. Williams, Williams can be heard. Repeatedly yelling at the officer, do it, then getting shot with the stun gun. Instead of being disabled, however, Williams sort of loudly fake laughed at the officer with his fist clenched and continues to approach him. Again, yelling, do it. At this point, Williams yells at the officer who is deploying his baton now, shouting, What sounds like? Fired your gun twice, all right? Now, I want to remind everybody, okay? The officer utilized his non lethal or what is considered to be non lethal devices against an individual that he knew he was well within his rights to simply shoot, okay? The mere fact that he decided to go. Through the protocol of non lethal. And then the other non lethal protocol was to what? He ran away. He ran away from him. He did not engage in physical combat. He did not choke him and, you know, execute the guy in front of everybody. It's a hell of a thing, right? There's more. When Williams starts walking away, the officer puts away his baton and follows Williams. Walking almost calmly, who gets into a late model gray Toyota Tacoma, drives away. The officer then 
runs back to his patrol car, gives chase. In the distance, sirens well as backup arrives. The suspect then allegedly fled to the east and north, leading a pursuit to a pursuit during which the pick uh, the pickup crashed into a parked car. After which Williams allegedly put his vehicle vehicle into reverse, and what did he do? Intentionally rammed into a police cruiser. A short time later, the suspect ran over a tire flattening spike strip, putting an end to the chase. Nobody killed him. Still, even though officers released a service dog on him, the suspect allegedly remained combative until additional shocks from the stun gun finally subdued him. The spokesperson said Williams was then arrested, apprehended, life intact, taken to the hospital for a precautionary checkup. Due to the vehicle crashes, the electric shocks he sustained and dog bite he suffered prior to surrendering. No other injuries were reported. Williams was expected to be jailed on suspicion of various criminal charges, including evading police, brandishing a weapon, issuing criminal threats, driving while intoxicated, illegal possession of a controlled substance, assault with a deadly weapon, resisting arrest and hit and run. A small dog that had been inside the suspect's truck during the chase was turned over unharmed to the custody of San Diego uh, Humane Society. Williams, who was being held on a $168,850 bail, is due in court on Tuesday afternoon. Now, naturally, this is an out of control situation, right? Somewhat promoted by the police. What if the individual left and instead of just crashing into the car of somebody else, he crashes into a human being or creates a massive accident on the streets and highways he decided to go down because the officer chose not to subdue, subdue him or shoot him, right? These are questions he will be able to be asked because he's alive. He will go through the process of due process as mandated by the US Constitution. Um, you, dear brother, have this remarkable ability, Professor, to see societal norms, the abnormality of behavior, all of these things are within the context of your profession. Do you see what I see here? There was a concerted attempt to preserve his life because we know good and damn well he could have laid this guy down. Well, thank you. Um, I, I actually have two points to make about this, which do link to my to my work. Uh, first of all, as it turns out, I have a book coming out in January about pretty much this exact point, right? The argument, I have a book coming out called What We've Become that talks about violence in America. And I basically say, what lessons do we learn by the policing of white Americans? Um, that's kind of this organizing oh. question of the book. Now, in the book, it's it's very linked to what you just said. I talk about a mass shooter who wasn't a mass shooter yet. He was just an angry white guy with a gun. And the cops kept letting him go, even though it was very clear that he was going someplace bad. They let him keep his guns. And so the question for me that was hard that kind of led me to read the book is, do we agree with the more lenient approach of letting this guy go? Letting him go, let him go on to commit this mass shooting. And I say very clearly in the book, if he was a young black man, this mass shooting never would have happened. And so what does that mean for policing in this country? Do we want more policing, less policing? And the answer I come to is we want equitable policing, right? We don't want to let mass shooters go. Um, but the rules have to always be transparent and, and the same for everyone. And so what I argue in the book is we can actually learn about policing from tracking the policing of white Americans. And, and so that's kind of the main point of the book. Mm. And then the the second point is really linked to that, which is one note about this case is the guy didn't have a gun in his hand, at least. Um, and there's so many things about like what happens to assailants when they're armed or not armed. And so I, I looked through the story pretty quickly, but I guess the question is if this guy had a gun in his own hand, would the outcome have been the same? Well said, I'm looking forward to uh, the book, dear brother. Really, really looking forward to that.